We all have conflict now and then, be that with a partner, with a friend or with a colleague. So I want to share with you five of my favorite tips for how to deal with a conflict. First tip is clarity. And clarity simply means that we are very sincere and honest with what we feel and how we perceive things and what we have observed, right? So the very first step in solving a conflict is really just being sure that you both have the same sort of um, feeling or observation of what really happened. So share your observation without starting to judge or tell your opinion about this observation, just a clear observation with no layer of judgment, right? What did ha What happened? And then later on, we can talk about how that made you feel. But so many conflicts are resolved simply on talking about the same thing and not misunderstanding one another. So trying to bring clarity into any discussion, any conflict is always the first step to resolution. And the second tip is staying in your own space. And staying in your own space simply means that you don't go talking about how the other person did wrong or <laughs> what they could do better and so on, but you talk about your experience. So instead of saying, oh, you did this really annoying thing, then you can rephrase that to something that goes a bit more like, you did this thing and it made me feel annoyed, right? So you see, instead of talking about you, I'm talking about me. How did I experience what you did? So we sort of take the judgment out of our statements. And this just brings for a more clear communication and a more inviting communication. Because if people feel judged and attacked by what we say, they close down and they start attacking back and then conflict can't really be resolved. So a really important step, stay in your own space. And now third tip is to communicate feelings. And communicating feelings is important because it can help the other person understand why we're acting as we're acting. So it is simply to say, right now, I feel this and this and that. I feel angry, I feel sad, I feel disappointed, I feel um, whatever might be the case for you, right? Um, so communicating that can just help with understanding because sometimes we, we communicate another feeling of, uh, than what we're really feeling. We might be, be really sad, but we start shouting and you know, knocking in the, in the table and so on. Or otherwise, we might actually be really angry and feel that our boundaries were overstepped, but we start crying, showing, you know, sadness. And, and in the same case, a lot of feelings can be sort of misperceived when they receive the receiver. And, and that just brings for some confusion. So it's really clear to communicate what feelings are involved, again, without trying to judge. So this goes together with staying in your own space to saying, uh, when you did this thing, I could feel that I felt very this and this and that, right? So be very clear about communicating feelings. And tip four is communicating needs. And needs are a little bit different than feelings, but still uh, as important or even maybe more important to share. And needs meets, means that we share uh, the reason for why we want what we want or why we feel what we feel. So I could say, I feel sad when you did this, right? But I need to tell why so I can communicate better to the person. So I'm saying the reason I felt sad is because sometimes I just need uh, some freedom or autonomy, or I need some um, rest, or I need some inspiration, or I need some sense of belonging. You know, you can fill out the words, but simply instead of saying, I need you to take the fucking dishes in the sink right now, you know? Instead of doing that, we can translate it into, Oh, I would love to have some uh, cooperation from you, right? Or I would have to, I would love to have a sense of sort of community where we share. I would love to have a sense of uh, equality, um, fairness, right? Where we do equal parts of the dishwashing. So instead of just saying what you want, then tell them why you want it, because then we can communicate. Because trying to communicate a need to someone who can't relate to that need sort of brings this, it's almost like speaking two different languages. If you don't care about how the sink look, but I really want a clean sink and I'm trying to tell you, please clean the sink because it makes me feel sad. You can't relate to this, right? Because it doesn't make you feel sad when the sink is not clean. So we need to communicate in a language that we both understand. In this case, case needs, right? So saying, I want to, can you please uh, clean the dishes because it makes me have a sense of nice hygiene. Oh, I can relate to that 
my sense of hygiene is more related to you know airing out or it could be cleaning the floor but i get the the sense or the need for hygiene so it's really important that we take whatever we want from the other person and translate it into needs so that we can communicate in the same language and that brings us to the fifth and final tip for resolving conflict, which is to request exact requests or make exact requests. And now a request is something that like most um, conflict resolving would have at the end, right? We've talked through the whole thing and now we need to find a better way we can do things in the future, right? How can we avoid getting into this conflict in the future? And that means putting requests to one another saying, could you please do the dishes in the future, right? That is a request. And sometimes our requests comes out like this. Can you just stop being such an annoying idiot all the time, right? That's a request. Please stop being an annoying idiot all the time. But if we say that to someone, they, they won't really change that much, right? Because for them, they have no idea what that really means. So it's so important that we make exact requests and very, very, very exact requests saying, how can you act in a way that I would love to? have you act right so saying next time that you notice that the dishes are not washed could you either wash the dishes or talk to me about um, uh, why you won't do it because when you do neither of those i sometimes start uh, imagining that you just don't care about it or that you don't really um, care about me so so i would love to have you either do it or communicate why you don't do it right so that's a very clear request i'm asking you to to do specifically this and where he, this is like a bonus tip almost, that is don't demand this, right? If you're saying uh, you have to start doing the dishes, that's not a request and you won't get very far with this. So request simply means that you're open for a yes and a no. And if the person says no, then ask them, um, could I make another request that you would like to say yes to? Because I would love to sort of find a way that we can continue forward. And, and then it goes, it's almost like negotiating, right? But so make exact and clear requests of what you would want the person to do because if not you will probably end up in a similar conflict soon enough uh, again after so that's five tips for how to uh, conflict resolve uh, and communicate better and you can use them in, in any situation it doesn't need to be a conflict it can also just be when you want to express how you feel it can be really interesting to to be exact talk about your own experience talk about what you feel and why you feel it um, and, and like that. So I hope these tips were useful for you and I hope that you find peace in your conflicts and uh, you're welcome to, to share your conflicts in the comment sections. I would love to answer if there's any questions or tips you would want for how you can um, continue on with a conflict you might have going. Um, but if nothing else, then I wish you good luck with your conflicts.